Welcome back yet again, episode 17 of my Final Fantasy Tactics Ramza Only Run. Last episode, we made it through the Bethla garrison, we recruited Orlando, stole his equipment, and kicked him to the curb. So, uh, with his Excalibur, I decided to try the Squire dual wielding. Uh, his damage output is much less, but his HP threshold is much higher, and overall, I think it's a fair trade-off, especially to have the speed boost, because I was finding that most enemies I could still get in uh, in one turn, and those that I couldn't, the speed boost was still worth it to, to just run them ragged. So we're going to be a Squire, and that affords us a unique opportunity because... In the next battle, we could potentially learn the Ultima spell as a squire. Uh, it's not terribly powerful. It's not like other Final Fantasies where Ultima is the most powerful magic. It's okay on power, but it's not going to wow anyone. And as a physical class, it's really not going to do much damage at all. But. You know, it's a fun novelty to have. So let's go ahead and I want to check my equipment, make sure I've got everything set the way I want it. Punch art is really weak. Um, but I do like the versatility and, and I think I'll leave punch art for now. Um, but it's weak when you're not actually the... the um, monk class. I've got my black costume on to cancel out the stop effect because these ladies in the next battle like to stop a lot. And I think I'm going to change the order of these. I want my ice brand first because that will more accurately predict my damage output. I want to see what the damage for the weaker blade will be first so that I know I can add about 10% or 10, 12, 20 extra damage. Um, but if I base my decisions off of what my weaker output's going to be, that'll be a little more consistent for me. But let's go ahead and head on in to the gates of Limbury Castle. And it's not going to matter where I put Rams on in this battle. He always starts out <laughs> in probably the worst absolute position. He starts out in the middle of all the enemies, below all the enemies, to where... If he doesn't have good movement skills or good jump skills, he is kind of screwed. But luckily for him, he's got a movement of 7 and a jump of 5. So he should be just fine. That's the other advantage of the Squire class. It has one more movement skill than the Monk class does. So, nobody here. Are these ruins really deserted? The entrance is open. Something's not right. This feels like the time I faced Kukolin and Velius. Welcome to Limbury Castle. We've been waiting for you. We have a warm welcome for you. We'll burn you to death, so don't run away. Damn, a trap. So I gotta defeat all enemies. So no just rushing in and taking out the boss. I gotta be strategic about how I do this. I think I want to get to where I'm on this side of the bridge and I have a log jam on the right side of the bridge. So I want to go this way and accumulate while I can. She might cast Ultima on me. Oh no. Oh no. 
Well, the good news is I can't kill myself. And hey, I'm gonna yell, so that's okay. And if I had my party here, that would actually be pretty catastrophic because I would be killing my own party. Uh, but I'm just gonna run around like an idiot until they attack me. Bad news is they know magic, they know bio, they're gonna petrify me. Magic will not wake me up. But so far, I'm doing okay. It'd be much worse if I yelled for the enemy. Give them a speed boost, but this is. Eh, all things considered, this is okay. I was not planning on this. I knew that they could charm you, but I didn't think their charm was that potent. Yep, that's gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to equip something to prevent the charm ability, which is gonna damper my movement slightly, which kind of sucks. But it's better than being dead. I might think about canceling instant death as well, but uh, honestly, between the two, I'd rather cancel charm because the instant death doesn't scare me as much. As long as I'm not adjacent square to them, it's it's not going to be an issue. And I should, should be able to keep my distance, especially with high speed. Scream, which is actually pretty awesome. I'm not going to deliberately um, artificially raise my bravery, but if I get a couple of points because I happen to use a scream here or there, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say no to uh, a more consistent auto potion. Um, I change them around my items. And I need something. Confusion and charm. So they won't be able to charm me. The only skill they won't be able to stop me. They won't be able to charm me. The only skill they'll be able to do is instant death if I stand too close to them. So I wonder what thief skills do I know? I do know how to charm too. Uh, I think I'll leave this punch out for now. Uh, I might try to see if I could charm them uh, if I continue to struggle. But I'm going to save the changes as I've made them. And let's see what we can do now. I'm pretty sure as long as they can't get next to me and attack me, they will try to use Ultima on me just to do any kind of damage and not waste their turn. So that should be pretty cool. But if memory serves, when I get to use it, it doesn't really do that much damage. And again, I'm always so overpowered that I don't really consider it as a viable attack. But 
Well, I'm not that overpowered. I'm only level 49, about to be level 50. Sure, she can't jump down here and get me. Yeah, because if I did go down there, she would be able to get me. Good thing I checked, so I'll go here instead. here he might get a physical hit on me but I'd rather him get a physical hit on me than try to use bio because bio could potentially give me petrification which would end the battle and I don't want that Nice. Yes, I do want to learn Ultima. Please do not petrify me. God damn it. Uh, this one's just going to be a try, 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 try until the percentage work out for me. I would equip a feather um, mantle to have a higher magic evasion, but then they would charm me. I don't think there's any armor that prevents charm. It's only the NK armlet. be tricky. charm her, that would actually be very handy. Uh, if this run doesn't work, I'm going to try to charm them. They might actually be immune to charm, but uh, 
but I'm gonna try it if I don't get this run to work. Only 44% chance, I think. Oh, you're using Shiva? Come on, use Ultima. And no auto potion, what a joke. So my dilemma is I really want to kill this guy and I think if I wait my CT will come quicker and I might be able to beat Ultima. If I can't beat Ultima I'll lose but uh, I feel like it's worth risking it just to see if I can um, snake in front of the Ultima. I don't, at this point I don't think I will actually. Yeah, that's a shame. But demonstrably, it's doable. I can get some damage on them without dying. I just have to survive the first petrify and then be a little more careful. I was, I was pretty unlucky with her drawing uh, summon as her secondary ability because Normally she would have done Ultima, and I was unlucky without the auto potion too. A few things that were unlucky. The only thing I got lucky there was surviving the Petrify, and that's just a given. I'm going to have to do that to, to have any hope. But I, I see some, some glimmers of hope on this one. It's got to get a good luck run and I'm gonna try just just for the knowledge just for my edification I'm gonna try to put the sea thief skill of steel and try to steal Celia's heart so if I can steal hearts that could be good and maybe I could even steal some of the demons hearts as well that would be good. Have them fighting each other instead of fighting me.
it's not because of anything she's got equipped. It's just... It's just the way she is. She's got summons, which kind of sucks. But lead does not. bravery as high as it is now, I really shouldn't be having a no auto potion turn. Like every hit should give yeah, should trigger my reaction. It's probably forty four percent chance on the stone. need to survive petrification. There we go. Now I have to survive that three or four more times. That's all. Uh, I'm gonna see what does Ultima do. I can't get close enough. I'm gonna have to go in for the hit. But while I'm here, I'm gonna see what does it do. Only a hundred. Summon magic could be a problem. Oh, you piece of shit. This is the point where I wish I had Earth Slash so I could kill him and damage her. Uh, this, as it is, I can do only do one or the other. Uh, his turn's coming up sooner. I'm gonna wait and get my turn before I lead and hope I can do enough damage to her without. Oh, he's doing a different type of bio. If he turns me into a frog, that's gonna wreck me. Uh, that really sucks. treat this like a reconnaissance mission. I learned that stealing their heart is not a good play. Um, I should have tried to steal one of the monster's hearts just to see if that's possible, but I'm gonna err on the side of just kill him. And 
if I got the opportunity to kill him, I need to kill him. It would be really good to have a distractor, but I'm just going to need to kill him. Lucky that she had items as well. Those are the two skills I don't want them to have. Summon magic and item. And they both had one or the other. Alright, leaving it as it is. Keep my punch hearts just in case. Because I can still harm them from long range. Um, not for very much damage. But... I can harm multiple people in the straight line. It's good to know that the different monsters have different bio effects too. So the one that I kill first, who is nearer to lead, he has Petrify. Uh, the one by... Another one has Frog, and the other one had... I can't even remember because it didn't even matter. But the Petrify and the Frog ones are the most dangerous ones, obviously. Before I do anything, I want to see what abilities to have. Time magic, that kind of sucks too. And white magic doesn't matter. sucks. He's got negative affinity. I don't know if that affects his success rate or not. Hey, he's not choosing... It must do because he's not choosing a, a petrify attack. doing damage instead which I will take any day so he is not a terrible threat I don't need to kill him right away he that guy is a terrible threat freaking A so when their affinities are not well suited they will use bio 3 instead because the percent I, I imagine the success rate percentage is so low that the computer calculates that it's not worth the try interesting 
uh, it could take forever to get a run with every single one of them having a negative affinity though. I don't think that's uh, an option. So I'm still going to have to survive a couple of petrifies here or there. But I think it's worth noting that that guy on top, he hit and run. So instead of running towards him, I need to run in a way that makes him run after me so that I can kill him. If he's going to get a shot at petrifying me, I need to get a shot at killing him quickly and not just give him a free hit and run. Uh, and I can limit it to where they only have one chance instead of two. Uh, only one demon will get a shot at me rather than two if I don't run to the stairs. It's kind of fun learning the strategy piece by piece. Uh, what's not fun is replaying the story every single time just to have the opportunity to get petrified in one turn. item which kind of sucks but she doesn't necessarily know she knows time magic which isn't that bad because she'd rather attack me um, they don't necessarily know phoenix town just because they have items so it's not a guaranteed sucky thing it's only sucky if they use the phoenix down i don't care if they use a potion hoping that Biblos would jump down here to cast a spell. As it is, I won't be able to get a hit on him, even if I survive, which I did not. Oh, this is going to be a tough one. Even if... Even if, even if, even if, even if I survive, this is so hard because I have to survive multiple times on a 44% chance, which is not that good of a chance. Just for the knowledge base, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try um, equipping the Feather Mantle and staying more than four squares away from Celia and Lead. I don't think I can. Eventually, they will steal my heart. Um, and be 
because of that, I'm going to put steel back on. I'm going to try to see. This is a purely informational attempt. I'm going to gather information. One piece of information, if I've got Feather Mantle, will they use Bio 3 instead of Bio 2? The other piece of information, can I steal the hearts of the Gargoyles, the Bublos Monsters? If I can, then I might actually have a chance because they'll I'll be able to steal their heart. They'll take a little bit of the heat off of me and I can get an army of Biblos monsters fighting for me. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think they're going to be immune, but I want the knowledge because I just I need to field out all my options at this point. Seventy-four percent chance that I missed, but still, that is great knowledge. Because now I have a plan. I'm gonna trust that she will attack the Biblos rather than me. Hopefully. If not, it's okay. And the computer's really thinking about what's the best option. was a good choice for that, but if she steals my heart, that's going to suck. Okay, she can only jump down here from here, so if I move there, she won't be able to get the instant death, and I can steal the other guy's heart. 60%, come on. Damn. She could jump down here, but I think she can only use the instant kill on level surface as well, so that's good to know. And actually, I might be able to kill her. This is amazing. If 
you want your dear sister back, be brave and enter. We'll be waiting inside. Hurry up. See, I thought this was a mission where you just had to kill them. But the wind condition said defeat all enemies. Alma! I could have... I, I thought it was just defeat one of them. But then when it said defeat all enemies, I was like, oh, crap. I gotta defeat all enemies. And every time I play through this, I'm so overleveled that just for fun, I kill everyone. And, and it's a lot of fun. But... That was that was difficult, but Steel Heart, Steel Heart coming up, coming up big. Uh, that's awesome. I think uh, for the movement ability, I think I'm just gonna stay as a squire because uh, I need to move in quick, and the haste is gonna be good too. Velius and Kukulin are both gone. We're the only ones alive now. Adramelk's caught in the loophole. Don't worry about him. He'll soon be summoned to the other side. Did they find a suitable body for him? Yes, the Zodiac zo Stone chose one. Just as they chose us, the stones will choose the body. Really? Now we have to bring back Bloody Angel using the ultimate power. Then, even without the stones or a suitable body, we can come and go at will. Did they find a good body for Angel? Don't tell me it's that girl. There's only one body suitable for Angel. That girl. Now we must find the way to the dead city. He's here. I lured him, him into the castle. What shall I do with him? I've been waiting for you, Ramza. Payback time for what happened at Ryovane's. Be careful, he's strong. He even beat Velius. Don't worry about me. Let me handle it. Go find the way to the dead city. Okay, be careful. All right, I'm going. They used a lot of these uh, Lukavi for the summons in, I don't want to overwrite my save, uh, in Final Fantasy XII. So Velius is actually Bellius with a B. Uh, Adramelech, of course, is another summon. Angel that they're talking about, I believe is Ultima. And about to see Hashmalum or Hashmal. Uh, well, actually, before that, we're gonna see Zelera. So, lots of the summons from Final Fantasy XII. If you know Final Fantasy XII, you are familiar with these summons. Uh, I meant to change my secondary ability to be something other than Steel, because, well. Oh, good, I can still do that. Uh, I could potentially steal... What can I steal? I could steal the Genji Shield Helmet on Armor. Uh, can't get the gloves. Can't get the Massa Moon. But I really don't think it's going to be worth it. I don't think I can survive this battle that long, especially if he turns me into... A vampire. I think I'm gonna need that just to stay not a vampire. Because if he does turn me into a vampire, my auto potion will kill myself. Uh, which is obviously not not a good thing. don't think it matters where I go. Should be automatic. I 
it's payback time for all the disgrace from Ryovane's castle. Alma, where's my sister? Where is she? You'll have to beat me to find out. Uh, talking of the summons too, the one that they keep on calling Queklane is really Kukolin, and that's how you pronounce it. Uh, he's a hero from Irish myth, Irish folklore. And this game not so heroic. She knows throw, she knows throw. And he knows blood suck, which is terrible. Can't move close enough to get to them, so. And the range on that's so bad. I need to go to one side or the other to try to. Can you not go to the screen? He's got Hamedo, which will automatically intercept my first attack. Uh, he is a tough cookie. And Charm, good god. And now I can actually damage myself. Before when they charmed me, all I could do was yell at myself, which was pretty awesome, actually. But now, I can hurt myself with magic, which will not wake me up from charm. Oh, no, it did, actually. Okay. Uh, still sucks, though. present dead. Not a lot you can do about that. Well. I think what I'm going to try is being a monk with equip sword rather than two swords as my passive ability. That way I can equip the Excalibur and have the auto haste and then my attack power will be enough that I can use uh, Earth Slash to some good effect and just stay at a distance. Um, Elmdor will be able to teleport and get me anywhere, but the ladies, at least, will not be able to get close enough to charm or kill me. I think that's the only reasonable thing I can do. Uh, the feather, feather mantle did nothing to prevent... Oh no, I didn't even have the feather mantle. I need the gems because I cannot afford to be a vampire. We're gonna be. I'm gonna have to go back and reset the items because everything's gonna be optimized after I change all the abilities. Oh no! You can't equip a knight sword with a with a quick sword ability. What's the freaking point of that? I don't want a freaking ice blade.
change plan back to Squire, and we'll do the same plan, but it's going to be less damage because he just has less physical damage that way. Um, do martial arts for my secondary, my passive ability, so that he will actually do a pretty decent damage output. Fix my items. Uh, I think I'm going to try the power sleeve because if I'm staying far enough away from them, they won't be able to use their stop ability anyway. I do want that movement or that speed bonus. Oh, it does actually change where you go. Uh, well, shoot, I should have been in position to hit one of them. That. Okay, and actually, I only needed to feed Elm Door, so. If I'd started here, I could have got a hit on him right away. As it is, I really don't want these ladies to get any chance of hitting me. With their, with their still hard ability. It's got a range of four, which is even longer than their steel heart ability. Well, I cannot afford to equip the power sleeve, that's for sure. We got time for maybe another couple of tries. This is these are all good, giving me good information on what is possible. But I don't have all day to sit here, or at least on this episode. I don't feel too bad leaving it. Uh, inconclusive, on, inconclusive on this episode because we at least did get through the first half of Limbury Castle which was really hard uh, well the first third because there's one more battle after this 
the next battle I'm not worried about at all. Um, this one I'm worried about a little bit. But I think if I'm able to do enough damage with the Earth Slash in the first try, with Earth Slash the first time, I might be able to get him to a position where I can finish him. Although, maybe it's still worth it to have dual wielding, even if Earth Slash is weak, because I need that finishing blow to be very strong. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. We're still just gathering information at this point, because uh, last time I didn't even get to see how much damage I could do with Earth Slash when I have the martial arts ability. And I do wonder if equipping a sword nullifies the bonus that you get for physical damage on uh, having the martial arts ability. We shall see. If the damage is close enough, it might still be worth it to equip the power sleeve to get that little bit of attack boost because what I could do is hit him, run to where the girls couldn't get me, he would teleport close to me, use his Muramasa, and then I could get a back attack and finish him. Maybe. But let's see what kind of damage I can do. So only 95. That is pretty pathetic. And if he starts sucking blood too, that's... That's gonna... going to not be good. potions I'm screwed. I'm screwed either way. They got me cornered. all sure up. But it's good to know if the auto potions had worked I could have got him to within a double tap of dying. So I think for the next try I'm going to keep the double swords do the punch art hope that it's at least close to the 95 I'm, gonna, I'm also going to try, I'm going to try equipping something other than the 108 gems because so far he's been just opting for damage output and not been trying to turn me into a vampire. Uh, if that remains consistent, I might, I might be okay. Oh, and he does have Hamedo and he does have a ridiculous evasion too. It's going to be tough. But for this next one, I want to just do the reconnaissance and see how much damage can I deal him if 
I have basically this set up. Let's try a bracer. Extra damage. And let's see if that affects if he's gonna use his vampire skills on me or not. If he doesn't, then we just need the damage output. If he does use the vampire skills, and then I'm in a world of trouble. Ah, God damn it! I forgot to move my position. Uh, well, this is just a reconnaissance mission. I'm going to see how much damage I can do with Earth Slash. I do have three more attack power than usual. But what would I do? God damn it. Uh, I'm getting sloppy. Which is telling me it's, it's getting time to wrap this up. It's getting late. But... Gonna do at least one more reconnaissance mission where I actually find out what kind of damage I can do. He is going to blood suck me though. Which actually instant kills me because apparently it counts you as dead if you are a vampire. I did not know that. I've never seen that happen because he's never been able to get my entire party vampired. Uh, well, yeah, I gotta, gotta definitely equip the 108 gems. That's good to know. Um, definitely 108 gems. stupid thing is if even if I kill Celia or lead they will instantly turn into a freaking gargoyle and so killing them is not really gonna be that beneficial I just okay, keep the two swords do punch art Keep the equipment the same, except 108 gems. Let's do it, and don't forget to move your start position. Thing is with these high ridges and without my Germanic uh, Germanus boots, I cannot climb up there. So if I move back here, I am trapped. So we'll see what I can do though. Only 65 with that uh, monk skill. The good news is I do know Ultima, so maybe that'll actually do some damage on him. Um,
can survive that all day. It's these goddamn assassins. And their ultima spells, I could survive pretty well anyway, too. These are looking pretty good. Do I want to hit all of them? Nah. I can just move back and forth from candelabra to can candelabra, and I might be able to survive. Oh, that's going to hit me for more because I'm charging. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, I can I can actually probably do this. All because of Ultima. Who would have thought? And I really need the auto potion to work every time. God damn it. Okay, new strategy. When she casts Ultima on me, move next to Elmdor. Okay. Okay, this is doable. Not only can I survive running back and forth from each candelabra, I can also... I can also cast Ultima on him. It's only going to take three or four of my own ultimas to finish him. With her ultima doing 200 damage to him, I think that's how I got to do it. In fact, if I can get both of them to cast ultima on me, uh, as long as my auto potions trigger, they will kill him for me. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling good about this one. Um, I'm gonna do punch art still. And I'm gonna do 108 gems so that I don't instantly die. Um, but everything else, we're gonna leave the same. This will be good. As long as I can uh, survive his Hamedo, I might even try an attack in the back if they if I can get them to do um, ultimas on me. But I might not even need to because two of their ultimas could do as much as 400 damage. Two of their ultimas plus one of my earth slashes plus one of my ultimas, that's easily 575 damage, probably 600 or more. So... This is good. Yeah, probably not 600, but easily 565. There or thereabouts. And I'm not sure if I need to actually kill, kill him, or if I just need to get him critical. That is awesome. I only got 500 left. If they each do 200 and I do 100, that would be amazing. Now the trick is, where do I want to go? I just want to move one away, just like I did the first couple times I tried. He'll 
be right there. They'll be close enough to do their ultimas. As long as I'm not confused like an idiot. God damn, no auto potion though. Still only need one auto potion. Well, damn, that's gonna be a net loss of 41. Okay, as long as I get one auto potion, I'll be fine. I cannot afford to hit myself, obviously. I wish I could, because I could get all of them. And I don't think... Oh, he's got Blade Grasp. He doesn't even have Hameda. Uh, but it's physical attacks other than the crossbow. So I think what's going to happen is the first one he'll grasp, but then the second one I'll hit. And the second one is my stronger one. Ooh, I don't like those odds. I'm just going to stick with guts. Because that's a sure 100% damage. Alright, all I need is an auto potion. I didn't freaking get it. All right, well, at least I know. Oh, hers only does 100. But still, uh, he would be very close to dead with mine on top of that. All right, I think this is doable. I think... It's doable. I'm not going to end the episode now. I'm going to give it another couple tries with this, this strategy. Uh, it is doable. if it would be worth it to use Scream instead of my Earth Slash on the first turn. Because then I could get the Speed Boost, which is nice, but also the Magic Attack Boost, which could help the damage, like the difference between taking 65 off uh, or gaining more damage for my... I think that's what I'm going to try. I'm still going to set the ability as punch art and I'm gonna equip this obviously make sure yeah uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position myself where I need to be for them to attack me and use scream and wait so I'll be right there instead of in the front row My magic attack will be up, my bravery will be up, which will help trigger my reaction ability of the auto potion. Uh, that'll be what I need.
difference is only 10. I might rather actually have the damage from the from the earth slash. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and just call this a informational run. So my attack power is, is a lot nicer. So I, what I think is gonna happen, he's gonna blade grafts the first one and then I'm gonna actually hit him for the second one. Which is what happened. So that's better than the damage I would get for, uh, for Ultima. As long as I get my turn before the ladies, I, I should still be able to finish it. And he, it might actually finish because he's critical. Yes! Goodbye, you bastard. Ugh, you're strong. I thought you'd be strong, but with this body, I can't seem to... Underground, come down. Your sister is there. You're not getting away. Whoo-wee, that was a tough one. Took some big brain moves. Yes, I absolutely want to save. Oh man, have you ever seen anyone take out freaking Elmdor solo level 50? Come on now. Not even over leveled. Like barely, I might be 10, 8 or 10 levels over this, the current level of the enemies now. A little over leveled, but honestly not that over leveled. Let's go. This battle I'm not too worried about, but that in itself kind of worries me because I don't really know what to expect. I mean, I know what to expect. There's going to be some undead. There's going to be three zombies in the back. There's going to be some zombie knights. Uh, and there's, of course, Zalera. But... I usually just, at this stage in the game, in a normal playthrough, I'm level 99, dual wielding monk, and I just blast through the enemies. So, it's been a while since I've actually had to strategize these battles. Elmdor, give up. You don't have a chance. Let Elma go. Oh, you fool. She's not in this castle. The only ones here are the spirits of the dead. It's unfortunate that uh, your life shall also end here in this graveyard. It's unfortunate that I've got Meliagel in this battle, as we're gonna see. Spoiler for... It's not, can it really be called a spoiler if it's spoiling something that happens in literally two seconds? Um, but with Meliagel in this battle, she can't actually effectively attack the zombies because they have no equipment. Let's settle this once and for all. What? The, Mar the Marquis? A monster? But she can distract them, take damage from them. So this really should be easy. I only have a couple of knights in Zalera. Uh, well, I'm probably speaking out of turn because I honestly don't know what kinds of attacks Zalera does. I think he'll put me to sleep, which is not fun. But let me see if I can take out a knight. If I can't, yeah, I'll take out a knight. If I couldn't, I would have just took out Zillera instead. But Nightmare, yep, he'll put me to sleep or death sentence. Uh, between the two, I'd much rather have sleep, actually. 
so I'm going to have to equip something to prevent that. This is the power of the Zodiac Stone. Now you know what I said was true. Your brother Izu died because he found the truth and fought them. Oh my god. Does Father Vormov know that? Know that? Well... <laughs> so you're Vormov's daughter. Just like Izulud, your body isn't suitable for us. But your father's was. Then father was... Yes, he's no longer your father. He's now a blood member of darkness. But no matter, for you... Uh, for now, you and Ramza will die here. Uh, yeah, I'd much rather have sleep because the knight could just attack me and wake me up, but with Death Sentence, I have two turns to finish it. And I don't think I'll be able to finish it that quickly. Because he's probably got at least a 1,000 HP. I don't think he has as much as Velius, though, so maybe he's only got eight or nine hundred. What you said was true. I'm sorry. It's okay, Meliagel. Let's avenge his loot. Alright, let's... Let's try to get as much damage done as we can. About 300 a turn. something to prevent death sentence, that's all. He's not even bothering attacking because he knows I'm going to die soon. And it might be a good strategy to come help uh, Meliagel so that she can in turn come and help on Zelaya. Uh, but if this doesn't kill him, I'm dead on the next hit turn before I can even move. It's good to know that's his, his, his damage output, so that's very survivable. I just need to nullify his nightmare ability, and it'll be just fine. I'll probably, well, yeah. I could equip items, use Phoenix Downs. That might be a sensible thing to do, but I, I feel just cheap doing that. I don't want to do that unless it's like I've tried it four or five times and can't beat it legit. I don't want to. I don't want to be cheap. Got a nullify death sentence. Okay, that nullifies infant death, but not death sentence. I need jade omelet. Oh no, let's petrify stop. I need defense omelet. No, defense ring. There we go. Now we're for a good time. Yeah, I'm not going to be cheap. We'll just win it legit. Don't think it matters where I go because he always walks up in the story and talks. I might not 
not be able to kill the knight. Or at least not that same knight because I don't have a uh, movement of seven anymore. I've got a movement of six. Ramza has been chasing his sister halfway across two chapters. I haven't even seen her yet. this night because he's got an affinity with me. It's a good thing we don't have shields on. Oh my god. What an asshole. I'm just gonna have to run around for that to wear off. Uh, it really sucks because it prohibits my reaction ability from triggering too. So I'm going to have to stay alive while running around. Well, this asshole is breaking my hat. strategy I gotta use is stay back, save Maluda, so that she can go and be a distraction to Zalera. holding their own this time. And I can use that flare too to my own advantage and try to take out the knight. Run next to the knight. Except I don't get a chance. I gotta get away from that. abilities when you can't act. Oh, there's no getting away. He's gonna run me down. Don't act, sleep, and death sentence. <sighs> Don't act is pretty bad.
think all things considered, haste hasn't been that great of an asset. I might revert. To the monk class for the damage output. Because if I can finish him in two rounds, maybe I could survive with. Maybe maybe that's what I gotta do. I think I'm gonna try it as a monk. See how much damage I can do him. Uh, not worry about the knights because they don't matter. Just get the damage on the guy as, as quickly as I can. Almost a master squire again. Just a few more points. Um, I don't think. I don't think I'm gonna nullify death sentence because. I'd rather know if I don't act. Get that power sleeve. Do as much damage as I can. That's the only strategy. And in fact, this is just a recon mission, so let's put the bracer on. Get maximum attack. Because uh, he's going to do nightmare before he's going to cause me to don't act. If I fall asleep, that's fine, because the knights will wake me up by hitting me. If I get death sentence, that's fine, because I still have two more turns to finish him off. So I think that's what I want to do. Let's do it. Should have a pretty substantial damage output. Like 300, 330 per hand. Maybe 350, that would be awesome. Because then I could definitely finish them in two rounds. And it wouldn't matter if I got sleep or death sentence. Interesting that the knights aren't floating, so they're not actually undead. I think they're vampires. Which, you know, technically is undead, but. I did not account for the fact that he'd get his turn first because of the speed difference. I don't have haste. But he's a fool and he moved next to me so I can hit him and wait and hopefully get my turn first the second time. Uh, I've only got two shots to finish him though. Because... Good news is, because I have death sentence, he won't bother to even attack me. Uh, he won't even bother to hit me with don't act, I don't think. 300. And if I wait, I think I will get my turn first. So there's 600. Just want to see. Damn, I'm not going to get my turn first. 
but he won't be able to run away from me, so I'll still get a hit on him. Just out of curiosity. Yeah, he is undead. He's not a vampire. It's unusual that they're undead, but not floating. I'm just banking on the fact that he has around 1200 HP. Uh, I haven't looked it up. I don't know how much he's got. Uh, honestly, I really wish I had better, better damage output than just doing 300. I could have done 320, 350, but apparently not. This is my last shot. Hit him in the back. Yes. He had 1200 or less. That's all I needed. Hashmaloom. Sorry. I'm leaving the rest to you. Just collecting these stones. Secrets hidden in this. Yeah, secrets hidden in this stone. I never dreamed. It may be divine, but I thought it was just a strange rock. I never thought collecting them would make a miracle. Neither you nor Islid were informed. Even Wygraf didn't know until he turned into Lukavi. So even the high priest plots being used by Vormov. What are they after? That, I don't know. If they want to, they could destroy an entire brigade, just like at Rylvane's. If they don't use that power outright, there must be a reason why. Maybe they can't use their power outright? The Lukivi of legend was an unbeatable, ferocious monster. That's right. They don't seem to be the immortal evils the legends say. Legends do tend to over-exaggerate, Maybe Lukavi was just another monster after all. I hope so. I'm going to give you this zodiac stone. In return, let me go along. I want you to uh, I want to know why my father besides besides I want to know why he gave away the Capricorn stone. Why it was given to Lord Dystar. I need to know. To my brother? Why? I will add you to my party just to steal your unique and rare weapon. And then kick you to the curb. Because I cannot have you cluttering up <laughs> my party. Um, now I just can't have them in my party because I will be forced to play them if the battles divide my party into two groups. So I am sorry, Meliadio, but your equipment is forfeit. She is by far the least versatile of the Holy Knights. She only knows the equipment spells, which are nice, but once you break the person's equipment, you can't actually hit them with the same ability. Like, if someone doesn't have a weapon equipped, you can't use Hellcry Punch. Um, not that versatile. Good 
outside. <sighs> you are forgiven. all the time we have for this episode i hope you enjoyed it it was it was difficult it, it tested my mental faculties greatly i had to plan adjust 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 and plan and plan and adjust um overcoming the women was easier than it seemed because i only had to get them to critical i, I should have remembered that um but even so, getting them to where I could attack them was not it was not as easy as it might have seemed. But nonetheless, it was it was difficult. The, the hardest by far was Elmdor, and I knew it would be. In the back of my mind, I thought of all the battles in Chapter Four that could be run enders, uh, Limbury Castle, specifically Elmdor in the second battle, that was the one. But I survived thanks to his own assassins hitting him. Uh, next, we move on to Egros Castle to confront our dear brother. Join me for that episode. I hope to see you then. Until next time, have a good one.